What's going on party people? Kyle Foster here. Just want to give you a quick demonstration of my SVG workflow. Um, things that I consider best practices, things that work for me um, to cut down on bloat and uh, make thing as perform everything as performant as possible and uh, to make your websites look nice and crisp at all resolutions. Um, if you don't know what SVG is, it stands for Scalable Vector Graphics, and the, this video, if you're watching it, uh, you probably have a good understanding, but if you don't, give it a good quick um, Google search. You will find more information than you ever asked for. Um, so yeah, what, what are we looking at um, in this workflow? Um, Let's see what kind of tools we're going to need, shall we? We're going to need um, a vector editing software. I use Adobe Illustrator CS6. Your version doesn't really matter. Sublime Text 2 is the text editor that I recommend. Uh, once again, it's just kind of preference. Um, use whatever you like. And then also a development environment. For the purposes of this demonstration, I've downloaded a very basic version of HTML5 boilerplate. Um, that's just my go-to default. Um, use whatever kind of environment you like. I don't care. Uh, a couple of websites that you're going to need to bookmark. The first is Peter Collingridge's uh, SVG Optimizer. If you didn't realize that you can optimize SVGs, you are wrong, sir, because this tool does a great job at cutting down on some of the uh, bloat. And then also a Base64 encoder. Um, I use Mobile Fishes simply for the fact that they have an input uh, for your uh, raw source code, which is the way I like it. So yeah, let's get started. Let's open up Adobe Illustrator, and I've already got um, a graphic in here. This is my personal logo, and the reason that it is so colorful is because I wanted to demonstrate that these are separate elements, separate groups, and that um, some of them have strokes and some of them don't. The first step in making a viable SVG for the web is to make uh, make your SVG as small as uh, the file size as small as possible and as um, at least complex as possible before you ever export it out. So what we're going to do is we're going to select all of these elements. I know that I'm not going to manipulate this SVG. Um, I'm not going to animate it or anything like that. So it can be it's going to be a very static SVG. So I go ahead and select everything, and I'm going to go to Object, Expand, and I'm going to expand a fill and a stroke. Turn this into the most simple graphic that I possibly can. And then I'm going to go over here to our Pathfinder tool, and I'm going to unite everything. And basically what that does is it reduces everything into um, as few paths with a fill as possible. You'll notice that this all became one solid color, and you'll notice that the rocket is now a part of the uh, stroke circle here. So now that we've very quickly demonstrated a good way to reduce um, SVG file size within Illustrator, let's go ahead and export that out as an SVG. Now in Illustrator CS6, you go to Save As. In prior versions, I believe you went to Save for Web. It accomplishes the same thing. Doesn't really matter. So we're going to go to Format, SVG, Save. Replace that real quick. For the font type, let's go to SVG. And for image location, let's go to embed. Click OK. That should have saved out. And now we can quit Illustrator and double check. There it is on the desktop. We're good to go. Once we've done that, let's go ahead and optimize this SVG. Let's go to Peter Collingridge's uh, SVG optimizer. Choose logo.svg. You notice that it's 7 kilobytes, which is pretty darn lean, but we can do even better. And let's upload it. It gives you the option to select decimal places um, when you optimize your SVG. I found that one does it, so you don't even have to worry about it. Let's go ahead and optimize it. And it gives you a nice little report here. <clears throat> notice that the original file size was 7.27 kilobytes. We've reduced that down to 6.31. And while that seems to be very tiny, hey, every bit helps. Let's download it. And let's go ahead, and I'm going to drag and drop it into Sublime Text 2 so that we can see the kind of markup that we're looking at here. Now, 
you can go ahead and further optimize this. You, you don't have to, but I'm a little OCD, so I find it a little therapeutic. So there you go. Um, for the SVG opening declaration here, the only things that you really need, the view box and the XM LNS. That's the only two little attributes uh, that you need. Um, we can go ahead, remove these groups because we don't need them. Let's select everything and remove our indentation. And then let's remove these new lines. And there you go, one, one solid mass of characters and brackets. That's how we like it. So let's go ahead and select everything, copy it. And we're going to go ahead and start uh, implementing this into our project. The first method that I want to show you is embedding it directly into our HTML. So let's open up our project. index.html. We're going to remove this paragraph that is the default uh, boilerplate stuff. And we're just going to make a div with a class of logo. And we're just going to simply paste that SVG in there. Save it out. And there it is. Pretty cool, huh? Now the reason it is so big is because when we optimized it, we removed from this SVG declaration the width and the height. You notice that it's 62 by default, so let's go into our main.css for logo. <clears throat> Give it a width of 62 pixels and a height of 62 pixels. Save that out and you'll notice over here that it has been reduced to that size. Pretty easy, huh? Another method that you can use is to directly within your project, in your images folder, reference <clears throat> in your HTML. So you can go image source equals image slash logo dot svg. Uh, the reason that I would not recommend using this uh, method is because it's really not necessary. Um, you're essentially adding in another HTTP request for no good reason. The second method, and this is actually the method that I use the most, is embedding uh, Base64 encoding this SVG, this optimized SVG, and then embedding it directly into my style sheet as a background. Um, once again, it, you uh, have no extra HTTP requests, um, and yeah, it works the best for me. I find that if I'm going to be using an element on multiple pages, like a logo um, or icons or something like that, then you have to put them in your CSS um, as opposed to embedding them directly into your HTML. Um, if you want to only use an element on one page, then you would do it in your HTML um, and save uh, yourself from uh, fattening up your CSS file. So for this, we're going to go ahead and create another div with a class of logo2. And we're not going to throw anything in there. It's just going to be a container div. Okay? We're going to go back to our main.css and let's go ahead and give it the same width and height. Logo2. And we're going to do background URL and let's see if I can remember this off the top of my head. Data image slash SVG plus XML semicolon base 64 comma. And then we're just going to do no repeat center center. And we're going to save that out. And let's go over 
to MobileFish's Base64 encoder. We're going to paste in our optimized SVG markup. Going to go down to max characters line. Let's give that 999, which is the max that they allow. And then we're going to fill out their little capture and convert. Let's select everything. Go back over to our style sheet. And right after this comma, that's where we're going to paste our base64 uh, markup. And let's go ahead and remove all these new lines because they will bork um, your SVG. And that's what you're left with. One line, bada bing, bada boom. Save that out. Let's go back, refresh it, and there it is. We have two different methods to get an SVG onto your website without any extra HTTP requests um, and with the smallest file size possible. Um, you'll notice that you can zoom in and they remain nice and crisp. And another cool method with stripping out the inherent width and height attributes in your SVG is that if you want to resize them, boom, change them in your SV in your CSS file. So hopefully this has kind of illuminated some things for you. Hopefully that uh, you can start using this technique and uh, yeah, let me know if you know of any improved methods that I should be looking, uh, looking for. Uh, I'm all over the internet. My contact information is everywhere. I'm on Dribbble. I'm on CodePen, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, all the things. So yeah, have a good day and rock on.